How do you become a backend developer in with C-sharp? What tools, languages, and frameworks do you need to know to get started? In this video, we're gonna go over some of the options you have as a C-sharp developer and look at what you'll need for each. Then tomorrow, I'm gonna issue a challenge to you that will test your backend skills. Now, before we dive in, I wanna share a few things with you. First, if you're interested in improving your C-sharp skills, be sure to subscribe to this channel. With over 500 C-sharp videos and counting, it's the perfect place to learn and grow your skills. Second, if you're looking for free C-sharp resources, head over to iamtimcorey.com and go to the resources tab. You'll find a podcast, the C-sharp projects page, and so much more. And third, if you're ready to dive deep into a specific C-sharp topic, I have a variety of courses that can help you out. Not only will you receive a world-class education, but you'll also help fund, fund my free content so everyone can have a great education in C-sharp, not just those who can afford it. All right, let's jump over to Visual Studio and let's create a, a new project. So new project, we'll call this, um, well, let's first select which type of thing you want. Let's go with C-sharp language and we're going to choose the class library. So we'll call this uh, class library and we'll call this the back end uh, demo or back end. Yeah, back end demo. What do we call the previous one? Let's look at that first. Front end demo. Yep. So back end demo. Not a React project. Let's do a class library. So class library and back end demo. Now, why did I choose, and yes, .NET 7, why did I choose the class library as the, the first project to show you? And the answer is really simple, because as a, a back-end developer, you need to be really comfortable with this type of file. You need to know how class libraries work. You need to know how to write code that doesn't necessarily have a user interface way of testing it. A front-end developer can just hit F5 or however they want to run the project and then see what they're working on and tweak what they're working on and, and make sure they have the, the buttons in the right place and that kind of stuff. As a back-end developer, that's not really where you live. Where you live is writing C-sharp code. And so as he talked about in on Thursday in the, in the dev question video, we talked about how as a C-sharp developer, with backend, you have to go deep. You have to know the language really well, which is a foundation for learning any of these types, front end, back end, or full stack. But you have to go deeper into the language and really focus in on learning how the language works and use it well. So knowing how to build out a library, build out tools in this library to help you out. Build a library that can talk to data access. One of the things that often trips people up when they first start getting into uh, C-sharp development is they see me put a, a, a class library in place that talks to data access and that they I then use in, let's say, a Blazor server app. And they say, well, Tim, that's great, but how do I use that in a WPF app? Or how do I build data access for a WPF app? And the answer is, it's just the same because the, the building the data access and the business logic, that stuff is backend development and it applies the same to almost any user interface. I say almost because, for example, Blazor WebAssembly, you'd have to put an API in between. But still, the backend code doesn't change. It just means you have to have an, a layer in between to allow it to safely talk to the user interface. So the data access code should be the same regardless of which user interface you choose. So knowing how to write this code and knowing how to create something that's really independent of a user interface. That's the other thing is often people mix in their user interface code all the way down to their, their data access. And that's not a good structure. That's a, a very brittle structure that's, that's very hard to maintain and can cause some real problems. So knowing how to separate those out is important. So knowing how to work with a class library, really important. Along with that, there's another project type. And this one, 
you know, it depends on which type you like. There is, uh, I typically use XUnit. So we'll, we'll search for that. But there's XUnit, there's X, uh, N unit, and it's also the MS test project type. And this search for whatever reason, it is not like it when I first typed something in. So you can do, oh, there you go. X unit test project. You can also come over here and search for test and that will, or filter by test. And that will also bring those up. And as you can see, X unit test project, but also N unit test project. And there'll probably also be MS test in here somewhere, or you can just come down here and say test and clear this box out. You'll see MS test project, N unit test project, X unit test project, and you may ask the question, which one is best? And that's not a great, a great question because it depends. That's going to be the answer you're going to get. It depends on what you like, what works best for you and your team and what you're comfortable with. You can succeed at unit testing with any of these. So which one you choose up to you. I personally prefer X unit for most of my projects, but it doesn't really matter. Um, Let's actually make that capital X, X unit. And knowing how this works with facts and theories and, and passing data in is really important. And knowing how to then test your code so that if we go build here, that should build. Um, so we can close it out, start over. It looks like it's not bringing in dependency correctly. So that might be um, a problem, but that's something that you need to know how to do is how to work with this. Um, let's just update all these, how to work with this and make sure that they work correctly. And you can test your class library using unit tests and so on. So this is the type of thing that um, you also need to do to support your applications to make sure that your code is working the way it's intended to. So testing your application, also important. I'm not going to dive deep into why this is, this is airing out. Um, so it looks like it's missing a using directive. Um, so it, it may be uh, this package right here that needs. Um, so anyways, we're not going to dive deep in it. It's not the point of this video, but um, knowing how to test your projects is important. Okay, so you know how to create class libraries, you know how to test your projects, but what do you do with class libraries? Well, you write business logic, which means you should know some structure, some, you know, the, the fancy word for it, and I really cringe when I hear the, hear the word algorithms because people think that this is this mystical thing that, you know, only advanced people know how to do. And really what an algorithm is, is just a, a way to accomplish a, a problem, like, you know, solve a problem with code. And typically we see similar problems over and over again. And so we have typical or, you know, similar solutions to those problems. And so knowing how to solve some of those basic problems that you'll encounter when it comes to, you know, a CRUD application, create, read, update, and delete is what CRUD stands for. Um, but knowing how to get data in, out, and protecting the data and validating the data, making sure the data is not, um, you know, bad data or duplicate data or, or whatever, knowing how to you know, restrict what comes out and so many other things you can do with your data access. And then also your logic, applying rules to when to display data or not, and so many other things. So knowing how to work with data and knowing how to work with, um, you know, some requirements around that data that protect it and filter it and, and, um, figure out where it goes, if it even goes in the database and so much more. So knowing how to do class libraries, testing projects, those are the big ones for backend. I would recommend for a backend developer that you also add in another type and that's on the web and that's a web API project. So the reason why I say add web API, even though you might say, well, um, this is for, you know, um, just back I don't want to do web. Yes, but web API, while it is a interface, it's not really, I mean, it's kind of a user interface. The user is not necessarily a person. It might be an application. Uh, it's not a GUI. 
it, but it is a user interface. But at the same time, it's really um, kind of exposing your back end in a way that um, is allows you to serve a number of user interfaces, including ones you don't control. So you could uh, create a web API that then supports your desktop application, but also supports a mobile application and even supports a third party application. So there's a lot of different ways you can support applications using an API and an API can be a really good choice to make sure that you have one central set of logic instead of different class libraries all over. So knowing how a web API works, I've chosen here a minimal API and knowing, you know, knowing how this works and knowing how to work with it is important as well. So that's important to note is an API. Now what we haven't talked about yet is so far you've only dealt with .NET 7. And when .NET 8 comes out, we talk about that as well, right? But the reality is as a backend developer, especially now front-end developers have to do it some as well, but as a backend developer, especially you should know about older versions of .NET. Specifically, you should know about .NET framework and .NET standard in order to really round out your skills. Now, the difference between .NET framework and .NET 7 is, is somewhat significant, but at the same time, it's still C-sharp code and it's, it's pre-recognizable. It's just, you don't get all the cool new stuff we've got in the past few years. So, but knowing how to work with it is important because of the fact that a lot of companies are going to have legacy applications. And you may say, I don't want to work on legacy applications, but the reality is that companies don't just upgrade their applications very often. Now they should upgrade them more than they do, but it's very typical to find a company that is five years, 10 years behind the latest version because it's very expensive to update an application just to update the application. Now there's again, more reasons than just because when it comes to why you should upgrade, but knowing how to work with .NET framework and knowing how to work with .NET standard will allow you to work legacy applications and allow you to start moving those legacy applications to .NET 7 and beyond. So knowing how to work with .NET framework is also important. Now there's different ways to interact with a database and some of it's just know how to write good data access code. And a lot of data vendors will even give you the way to access their particular database using C Sharp, but if you're working with SQL Server specifically, and it's just SQL Server, but if you do have that option, that's what you're working with, then knowing how to work with the SQL project, and let's go to all languages here, SQL Server database project is a really valuable thing to know. So um, let's just call it database for database projects, it's fine. Um, this is a way to create and also keep up to date with your SQL database. So you can say, hey, I wanna add a, a new table and it will say, okay, you know, person table. And then it creates the table for you and the, the T-SQL necessary and so on. This is really helpful for creating your database. This is probably the most efficient way to create your database, not SQL Server Management Studio, which is more about management. Um, so this is probably a better way of doing that. It also allows you to put your, your database structure into source control and still allow you to give, have full control of your database, unlike if you create something like an entity framework uh, code first or something like that. So this also allows you to work with an existing database and upgrade it as well. So you can do a lot of stuff with this. If you work with SQL and with, as a C-sharp developer, you should at least know how to work with Microsoft SQL Server. Um, then you should know about this project as well and know how to use it to build out your, your SQL database. As a backend developer, you do need to know about databases and how they work. You do need to know how to create at least one database type um, with all the stuff inside. So if it's 
It's probably should be Microsoft SQL Server because that's a pretty common thing to go with C Sharp. But you know how you build tables and views and store procedures and know how to use indexes and optimize your uh, your database calls and so on. So that's pretty important to know how to do um, when working with uh, C Sharp at all. So those are kind of the things that that a backend developer needs to know. There's quite a bit here, but at the same time, it's not necessarily about the the, the amount of stuff. It's not nearly as much as the, the front end. You know, we're not adding multiple languages. It's just C Sharp, but it's more about the depth and knowing how to do things well. For instance, not just knowing, oh, I use Entity Framework and it creates my database for me, so I have no clue how SQL works, but it still works. That's not good depth. Knowing how your database works is important, even if you use Entity Framework, especially if you use Entity Framework, because of the fact that otherwise you're going to be a, a very hindered or limited developer. And as a backend developer, you need to have depth in your skills. So those are the things to learn. Those are the things to really grasp and understand and know how to work with. As you get deeper into this, you'll get into things like design patterns. And I say, yes, as you get deeper, not at first, okay? Focus first on learning C-sharp. If, if you focus on learning design patterns first, you will not understand why you should use those design patterns. You may say, oh, well, in this situation, I use this design pattern. And it's not that simple. You need to know how to balance the cost of a design pattern against the benefit of the design pattern. If you just start implementing design patterns right away, then you're really costing your application, adding a lot of complexity and not getting the value you need to out of those design patterns. So I encourage you to add those, but add them later, not right up front. All right, so those are the things to know in backend development, and that's how you become a backend developer with C Sharp. Now, tomorrow, I'm gonna issue a challenge that kind of figures out where you're at in backend development, figures out if you are comfortable back here or if you need to you know, fill in some gaps to really understand backend development in C Sharp a little better. All right, so come back for that tomorrow. Until then, thanks for watching, and as always, I am Tim Corey.